Say good morning, everyone. Our uh, next speaker today in Ham Village is Jason W2LDU, here to talk to you about the RF Dark Arts. Ooh. Let's give him a big, warm Ham Radio Village welcome. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, I'm going to give you a little bit of an overview of how I came into ham radio uh, in the past year or so, and then um, give you a little demonstration of SDR and sort of how to find things on SDR, and uh, we'll go from there. So what's my background? Um, I identify as a hacker. Um, I joined a, a local hacker space about seven years ago, um, started messing around with Arduino, um, wiring stuff. I'm an amateur photographer. Um, so I have a decent background in electronics -y stuff. Um, but radio just always seemed like magic to me. Um, there's a lot of different uh, things in radio that just don't make sense. Uh, throwing together a bunch of coils of wiring capacitors coming from Arduino doesn't seem like it would do much. Uh, so a few years ago, I started going on some road trips with friends and we wanted to communicate easier within the car, sort of, uh, commun uh, figure out rest stops and entertain ourselves, that sort of thing. And I got a GMRS license and this is a test free radio license. You apply online, you do, uh, $70 and you keep it for 10 years and you get a lot more uh, use out of it than say the Motorola family radios. You can go much higher power. You can use repeaters to have a much higher range. Um, and this was sort of my stepping stone, an easy way to play around with radio and be able to transmit without having to take a test. But GMRS still isn't very good. Uh, it's sort of a niche radio service that's mainly used for families. The license actually covers your direct family. So um, everyone in your household, cousins and step whatevers. Um, but a lot of people use it for hunting or off road. Uh, and there are large areas of the country that just don't have repeaters where you would, ha would have to stay within, you know, maybe 10 miles of each other to be able to talk. So I said, I think I should just get an amateur radio license. I There's a lot of places online where you can take practice tests and just get an idea of what they're going to ask you. Um, and I ran through one with zero preparation. And because of my background in Arduino, I got like 50% of it. Um, I was really surprised that the uh, a good portion of the test is basic electronics and circuit design stuff that's, you know, was stuff that I already knew. And the rest of it was, you know, like legal requirements and what you can and can't do and basically to keep you out of trouble. Um, there's also a bunch of other resources online. This is a YouTube channel, Ham Radio Crash Course. Uh, they have a playlist going through every single question in the test, explaining what exactly are they asking? Uh, why is the right answer right? Why are the wrong answers wrong? Uh, and this, along with just continuing practice tests, allowed me to uh, get a 34 to 35 on my test after maybe a month or two of prep. So now what? Well, obviously, I'm going to buy a bunch of radios. Um, the other thing you want to do is listen. The test really doesn't prepare you for how to actually talk to each other and the kind of etiquette that you need to be on the radio. It just tells you like how to not burn yourself on RF and how to not get the feds knocking on your door. Um, there are some other really great local resources. Uh, there are ham fest, which is just a large gathering of hams selling stuff, promoting their events, really great for learning what's around you and what kind of other things are going on that you could participate in. Uh, club meetings can be good. There are a lot of local, small local um, radio repeater clubs. There's probably like 10 or 15 in my metro area that I could choose from. Um, those are a little bit more stuffy because they're like full events with 
minutes and garbage. Uh, but there's also much more casual events. So around me, there is something called a ham feast, which is basically every Saturday night, we would go just pick a random restaurant, go hang out, have dinner, and just be friends rather than talking about business. And then I started getting into APRS, and this is actually a digital packet mode where with your radio, you can upload a packet with uh, GPS coordinates, altitude, speed, heading, uh, text, what other channel you're monitoring so other people around you can, you know, talk to you. Um, and this was really great for me because I went on a few road trips alone and I could just send my family a URL and they could see where I was and didn't require them to have a license or anything. They could just see where I was that day, where I was going. You can also receive packets from repeaters around you to um, sort of get an idea, lay of the land of what's out there. Um, and you can also see the other people around you that are beaconing and, you know, communicate, either um, connect to them on whatever uh, radio that they're monitoring on or, you know, there's a lot of really cool stuff that you can do and see when you have a system that shows a lot of stuff that's around you and on the radio. There's also a program called Echolink, and you can run this on a mobile phone or on a desktop. Um, this allows you to connect to repeaters all around the world. Um, this was really cool because you can bounce around the U.S., bounce around the world, get an idea of what people are talking about, um, you know, connect with people back home, wherever that may be. There's also amateur nets. And this is where at a scheduled time, it can be daily, weekly, monthly, a bunch of people get on a single repeater and go around and uh, just say, you know, talk about what's going on in their life. Um, there's a lot of different kinds as well. Around me, there's a new ham net. So the people running it are uh, much more accepting if someone, say, forgets to say their call sign or, you know, has a stupid, what would be a stupid question. Um, they're really good for getting your footing on transmitting on the radio and getting some questions answered. There's also a lot of emergency services uh, on amateur radio, and there are a few near me that uh, can be really interesting to, to participate in from time to time. One of the recent ones asked, um, if water went out at your house, think about how long you would be able to stay there um, and be able to live before you need to bug out to somewhere else. Sort of get you thinking about what, what happens in an emergency and what things, what preparation you might need to shore up in your own life. So once I got comfortable uh, and <laughs> had a kidney to sell, uh, I bought an HF radio to try and get out further. This is a map of people that I've heard uh, from my home and this is all on less than 10 watts, which is a tiny amount of power for this kind of distance. Um, we actually have a demo set up using this uh, exact system, WhisperNet, which is meant for long range, low power. Um, and it's a very interesting way to, you know, be able to say that you've talked to Ottawa. Um, and I learned my lesson when I got into HF. Uh, when I first got my license, I just sort of bought every radio I saw that seemed interesting. And I ended up with a bunch of radios that could do mostly the same stuff. Um, but with NHF radio, I really did my research, figured out what exactly I would need to hook up, hook it up to my computer to do digital modes. And then um, once I figured out exactly what I wanted, I got it. And it was only, only $700 for the whole kit. but a lot of people might be interested in what you can do without a license. There are lots of websites online that allow you to stream basically anything you could think of. Uh, Broadcastify is a great website. They 
uh, this is showing on the top left is showing uh, amateur radio repeaters around Las Vegas. Uh, so there's, you know, about 10 of them there. Uh, and most of these are streaming 24 seven. You can just hop on, click on it, listen like an internet radio station, sort of see what's going on. Um, and then on the bottom we have uh, DMR radio. And so this is a digital mode for amateur radio. And because it's all digital, it all goes through the internet. And so they've set up a website so that you can just tap in at the source and uh, all of these are open to anyone. There's also something called web SDR. And these are really expensive radio rigs, which allow you to listen to HF and shortwave radio. Um, there's probably about 10 in the US uh, and it can be used by a lot of people at the same time. So you, you don't have to kick someone else off to see what's going on. And this can be a really cool way to sort of dip your feet into HF or if you are interested in uh, shortwave radio. Um, it has basically every setting that you could think of to be able to, to, to listen to whatever is out there. You can also buy a $30 SDR, which is what I'll be showing you today. Um, these have a very wide range of receive, so you can get anything from um, AM or FM radio all the way up to um, in the gigahertz range, almost up to Wi-Fi. And then you can also get a cheap radio for mobile listening on Amazon. But you have to be careful. These can get you into serious federal trouble if you do something wrong. Um, one of the important things with ham radio is um, knowing where you should and shouldn't transmit and being doubly sure of that because it's a federal thing. So since an SDR can receive a wide range of things, what can it do? Well, like I said, you can listen to almost anything. Um, you can track planes. They, uh, planes have a little transponder in them that give, again, GPS coordinates, altitude, heading, uh, radio call sign. This is a, a very easy setup that can be done for less than $100. And you can see basically any airplane or helicopter that's, you know, within 150, 200 miles of where you're at. Um, these can be pretty interesting because if you've ever looked at the FlightAware app or website to see what planes are overhead, they filter out some of the more interesting stuff. Um, so with my setup at home, I can see police helicopters if they're you know circling over something or circling overhead. Um, I've also seen some really interesting military tankers over the Yuma uh, test site. Um, with weird call signs like skull one and skull two no idea what that was about but uh, interesting nonetheless you can also receive images directly from the space station this is actually what pushed me to get further into radio my local hackerspace had an event where we made a yagi antenna with laser cut plywood and copper tape and used a cheap five dollar sdr to pull an image directly off the space station um, they do events like this uh, maybe every couple of months, and they usually do like an, a whole weekend uh, where they have like 10 or 12 images that they send out one after the other so you can try and um, receive them all. And I should say these are all images that I, re I received and decoded myself. Um, pretty happy with these. There are also a lot of weather satellites that are up there that aren't encrypted and you can pull data off of them. Um, this one in particular is a amazingly high res digital uh, geostationary satellite that gives a full disk view of the earth. There are also some older analog ones that will give you sort of swaths of the earth as they rotate, as they uh, go around. Um, these can be a little bit trickier, especially the geostationary one because it's a little further out but it's a, a really amazing challenge um, and one I hope to uh, be able to get into further. There's also a NOAA weather facts, and this is for uh, boats and airplanes out across the ocean that need to know uh, what they're coming up on. This is all in HF and it allows you to decode an image of um, 
uh, swells or high winds or stuff like that. This is also something that seems really cool that I'd like to try out myself. There's also uh, NOAA weather radio. Uh, this is basically the entire U.S. is covered with this with multiple stations. Um, and these are really great for it. Say you're on a road trip and you're, you know, going to another state. You can just flip on one of these, see what, see what the weather's like over there. They also give alerts for, um, for, uh, extreme weather. Um, so, uh, this can be a really great resource for, um, knowing what's going on in that realm. All right. And then I'd like to give a demo. So uh, this is the antenna for the SDR. The, the actual SDR part is a relatively small USB device. Um, the setup is a, about 10 steps. It's really not that difficult. Um, and all the software for it is free. Um, so once we have it set up, we can press play. And we're receiving radio. Um, right here, as you see, uh, sort of in the middle, it says FM broadcast. This is FM radio. I've found that uh, with this setup, this is actually one of the best sounding FM radios uh, that I've used. <laughs> you can also poke around and find air bands. Um, so uh, in a moment, I'll, I'll pull up some websites that will allow you to uh, sort of sort through and figure out stuff local to you. Um, but uh, this whole swath of, of radio is uh, pretty much uh, airplanes up in the air, airplanes talking to air traffic control um, can be very interesting to, to listen in on. Um, I actually went to the airport to uh, uh, pick someone up a little while ago and uh, – it's really fun for me to just sort of drive through the airport and scan through and, and hear what's going on uh, up in the air just above me. So we can come up to the ham radio band. See if we can find anything good going on. looks pretty quiet today. Um, if we were uh, seeing anything, it would give a, a spike on this top uh, blue line. And then at the bottom, we would see a, a varying colors. Oh, there's something. Varying colors uh, to, to show how intense the signal is. All right, let's keep going up further, see what else we can find. There's also a marine band. Um, the, the websites also have sort of marine band standard channels. Uh, and then I think that uh, within this space, you can sort of just sort of go wherever you want as for uh, point to point communication. It's also military air uh, voice. Um, anything military U.S. government is pretty much going to be encrypted. Um, so talking about legality for a second. Um, Anything that's encrypted, you cannot listen to. Uh, decrypting it is uh, uh, illegal. Uh, but anything it, out in the open in FM analog or using a, a standard digital mode, um, you can listen to that as much as you want. Let's see where else. Up here in the 70 centimeter ham band, also looking pretty quiet. Um, we are in a very RF noisy environment down uh, here on the strip. Um, so it's going to be a lot harder to uh, pick up things here than it would be, um, say, back at Tuscany, where I'm staying, or uh, wherever you guys are from, hopefully. Uh, in the 5 and 600, well, 5 to 800 megahertz range is a lot of uh, police radio uh, ambulance, firefighters. I think that there's a lot of, uh, hotel, uh, radio up here. Um, you can poke around a little bit and sort of get an idea of, of where things are. Um, uh, radio licenses like that for, for public service or for private stuff, 
is all on the FCC website. You can actually search by location and figure out stuff that's around you that's transmitting, figure out what mode they're in, uh, if you can listen to it. Um, it's also pretty interesting. They give you tower locations, how much power each transmitter is using. Um, they give you a lot of information on that type of stuff. So here we can see a couple of transmitters. These look to be digital modes. Uh, they sort of just look like more intense noise. Uh, and these require some uh, digital decoding to get any voice or data out of. Um, using these SDRs, there are plugins that you can use to uh, decode digital data. And the system that police normally use, which is called P25, uh, you actually need two SDRs running at the same time. Now that's because they have one channel that basically um, all the radios communicate with and it tells them where in uh, other frequency ranges that they should be talking, sort of a, 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 ch a command channel. And then there's a big swath on either side that uh, lets you actually, let, is where the actual speaking happens. Um, all right. Looks like there's really not that much out there. So I can show you, give you an idea of uh, where to start if you are looking for stuff around you to listen to. So as I said, uh, Radio Reference is a really great resource. Uh, they have an enormous list uh, of uh, radio frequencies, both current and past, for pretty much anywhere. Um, I've pulled up uh, Las Vegas here. And you can say, see, it's a pretty big list. Uh, they usually break down by county or city. Um, and usually on this first page, when you click on, uh, you'll get all the analog stuff. So if there's any uh, police or uh, stuff like that that's still on analog, um, you'll see that here. Most places have moved completely to digital. And... Uh, if you actually, you can see here that there is a communications council. So that seems like a sort of standard thing. Anyone within a county will set up a, a countywide radio system where it'll retransmit um, the relevant stuff to whatever repeaters are uh, around there. Mm -hmm. And so when you click on that, you can see the, the frequencies that this is using. And uh, so... Uh, this list is actually transmitter sites, and the the one in red is actually the control channel. So that's going to be a lot of uh, digital data. And then all of these other ones are where uh, the voice is actually being transmitted. Some of these use this sort of distributed uh, controlled system on analog, and you can sort of bounce around between these and listen to what's going on, but most of them are digital. Um, but this has this should have pretty much all public safety stuff in the entire county that you can listen to. Uh, you can also pull up uh, hotel uh, frequencies. Um, this uses a very similar system. It has sort of different rooms for different uh, uses. Um, and you can, you know, uh, I would assume that the, the hotels are encrypting their stuff, so you probably can't actually listen to it, but it can be interesting to sort of bounce around. Uh, if you... Uh, don't know what's going on in a frequency or where to look for stuff. There's a lot of charts for uh, where the freq uh, where where the radio waves are allocated. Um, some of it's amateur radio, military. Um, you just really have to sort of dig in. Uh, what I've found is if I find uh, some random transmission on SDR, I just put in the frequency in Google, and usually it'll bring up something. Um, at least give you a start. Put it in FCC. Pull stuff up there. That sort of thing. There's actually a pretty good community on Reddit for uh, SDR usage. A lot of these people are doing um, weather satellite stuff, uh, but it's also a decent place for uh, asking for troubleshooting or seeing what issues other people are having. Um, and finally, I found a decent bit of use on Wikipedia. Um, it can be a little hard to, to navigate, but sort of getting a, an idea of what... Uh, radio services are called and then looking those up, reading through it, going down to the uh, see also section. Uh, can you lead you down some interesting rabbit holes 
um, as far as that goes. All right, I think that's about all I have. Um, I have a couple of uh, SDRs to give away. So please find me afterwards if you're interested and tell me something interesting that you'd like to do with it. Um, but that's all I have. Thank you.